joining us. Uh, welcome. My name is Jeremy Morton, and I am going to be your moderator this evening. Uh, we have some amazing stories and guests that I'm super, super excited to talk to and allow them to kind of share what we do at District 214 and what they are currently doing or what they did in District 214, along with showing you opportunities and ways that you can explore the career pathway of the fine and visual performing arts. So thank you for everyone um, who is out there. And for those of you who are watching us on the YouTube, hello, I've made it, I'm on YouTube. This is exciting for all of us. Um, like I said, my name is Jeremy Morton and I am the District 214 Fine Arts Coordinator. Along with that, I am also uh, a teacher at Prospect High School. I teach drama and I also teach college level speech and I'm the Fine Arts Coordinator there as well. So I will give us some insight from that perspective as a teacher, but I also have um, five amazing students here. Uh, I'll start, I'll introduce really quickly um, from my left. It's, we have Jack Repack from Rolling Meadows High School. Jack, say hi. Hi, I'm Jack. I go to Rolling Meadows High School. Thanks so much. And then that was really good. Crush it, <laughs> crush it. Uh, Jack does speech and theater. Anything else you do at uh, Rolling Meadows High School? A lot of speech and theater. <laughs> ah, I cannot wait to hear about all what you do and what opportunities you've had, but we'll get there later. Next, we have from Wheeling High School, Denise Flores. Denise, why don't you tell us uh, what you do at uh, Wheeling High School really quickly? Hi, my name's Denise. I am in both of our choirs at Wheeling High School. I am doing speech this year. I am in the musicals, and I am also in marching band. Woo, all right, singing and playing and all of that jazz. Now speaking too, I love it, I love it. And then from John Hersey High School, right? We've got Jess Brandvold, say hi Jess and tell us uh, kind of what you do at Hersey. Yeah, um, I'm Jess Brandvold, I'm a senior. Um, I participate in approximately a million orchestras but I'm concert master in my symphonic orchestra and um, I'm currently in the pit orchestra for the musical. I'm in District 214 Honors Orchestra. I'm in Chamber Orchestra and I'm in a uh, uh, string quartet. That is a million amazing. I love it. I love it. Thanks, Jess. Uh, big Fish coming up soon. I, I cannot wait to see that show. Um, speaking of the big show, we have from Prospect High School, Emily. Emily, that was not a good transition. I'm sorry. I just, tr I tried so hard. I was under such pressure. But we have from Prospect High School, Emily DePause. Will you introduce yourself and let us know what you do at Prospect? Hi, I'm Emily. I'm a senior at Prospect. I am in the marching band. I'm a drum major. I'm also in the symphonic band and the orchestra, along with, I am participating in IMEA this year, and I also did it last year. Um, and I also am very involved with the visual arts part of Prospects. I've been taking classes ever since I was a freshman. Wonderful. Thank you, Emily. Uh, and our last student from Buffalo Grove High School is uh, Colleen Dahl. Colleen, why don't you say hi and tell us uh, what you're involved in, with. Hi, my name's Colleen. I'm a senior at Buffalo Grove. And uh, I'm involved in, I've been in band for four years. And I, this is actually my first year taking an art class at BG, but my past years, I have been very involved with tech crew and a lot of design aspects at BG. And I'm currently doing a mural for our language department. Oh my gosh. I cannot wait to learn more about this. That was not on my agenda, but I'm writing that one down. Nice job. All right, Colleen, thanks so much. Uh, and then we have a really cool alumni um, and Mr. Danny Olson is here and he's got so many titles. Danny, I feel like I'm going to let you introduce your, yourself because I want to call you like DJ Awesome, <laughs> but there's probably more things than just that. Um, so currently I am a composer, producer, um, performing artist. I guess you could say I DJ as well. Um, I will get into all my formers because everybody else's activities are things that I've also dabbled in as well. Over my years, um, I went to Rolling Meadows High School and I graduated in 2006, if you can believe that. Um, but yes, right now I am a composer producer living in Los Angeles. Awesome. Thank you, Danny, for joining us uh, kind of early in your day, but oh, a little yeah. bit later. Great to here. be here. 
Yes. And then you can have dinner afterwards. It's perfect. I appreciate, appreciate you. Um, and so what I'm going to do before we actually talk to our panelists, I want to um, share with you uh, the, our basic uh, overview of the career pathway experiences. And so we started off, we talked, we introduced all of us. There are our names, beautiful. And yes, very good. That's That's us in writing. And that is who we are. I believe this pathway presentation will be shared along with all of the booklets um, that I'm gonna kind of talk about really briefly, will be able for you to see on the district website. And when you are here at District 214, we really strive in providing our students opportunities to, both in the classroom and outside of the classroom uh, and helping them find their passion in that career pathway experience. And so we're quickly looking at an overview here that's graphic arts. I missed what the last one was. Oh, we're moving here. Graphic arts, if we go forward one, we have, I believe the next one is studio art. If you go forward one, maybe theater, is that right? No, photography. There are a lot of art opportunities and pathways. If you are interested in the visual arts, um, you could take a look at all of these opportunities. We could stop right here acting in theater as the acting teacher. I can talk a little bit more about this. But if you look at a page similar to this, it kind of tells the student how they can approach um, the pathway and students can jump in and out of that pathway at any moment. And if they didn't start their freshman year, there's still opportunities and ways for the student to continue on that path in kind of receiving experiences and the classes. And if you're not in, for example, acting one your freshman year, you can still take it your sophomore year. You can still end up in advanced theater workshop your, your junior year or your senior year. It really does not matter. But if you could see here on the bottom of it, it talks a little bit about your major requirements in order to graduate. And that's pretty consistent across the books. But on the top portion of the of these charts, we'll kind of talk about what are the classes that we offer if you are interested in this focus, in this path. And then the right side of each of the pages, it talks a little bit about not only what we offer in our district as curricular options, but also the co-curricular activities that students can get involved in, in. So if they really like performing, they can also do a play, a fall play. There's the drama day experience. There's a creative writing experience. There's the speech team, as we heard about. There are many opportunities and clubs that students can um, partake in in order to really get involved in their experiences. So we, we saw a few visual art examples. This is acting and drama. If we could go forward, I believe we start looking into maybe our music classes. So if band is an interest to you, you can see kind of here's the path. Here's choir. Your freshman year, you start in one class. Dance, you start with orchestras one or dance one, two, three, and then end up in orchestras. And then is there one more orchestra? You know, so we've got Jess who was in a million orchestras. You know, maybe you don't take a million. Maybe you just follow four. You can still follow this pathway. In a freshman year, you probably will start with the concert orchestra or beginning strings. Um, they're labeled sometimes a little bit differently at any of our six schools, but there are opportunities every single year for our students to take an art class, a visual art class, a fine and performing art class. And so they're kind of labeled in our book, what are those opportunities for your student? And again, if a student decides they didn't, they want to go into orchestra their sophomore year, they can come on in and work with the orchestra director and they will help determine which is the best path to start on. And then if you go forward to the next page, please, um, you can find this information on the District 214 website, d214.org. And under academics, you will notice that the academic pathway and handbook or guidebook is listed online. And so a lot of the information um, that I really quickly uh, shared with you is, is there and you could peek at it and specifically take a look at all of the class options we have. But because there's so many visual and fine and performing arts, I feel like the, the time that we have here would be better spent kind of hearing the stories of our guests, our panelists, and what opportunities they have. And so at the end of the night, if there are any questions, you could put some questions in the chat, we can answer them, but we'll spend most of our time over the next 20 to 30 minutes kind of talking to our panelists and learning about some of their opportunities because hopefully a lot of your questions will be answered. Um, and so let's actually, I'm gonna start with um, an alumni, Danny, if that's, if that's all right. Um, and then 
we can hear kind of what you did and how to get to where you are, and then we can find out where our current students and what where they are and what they are doing. Um, so I'm going to ask you a question, please. If you could actually just tell us briefly. So in 2006, when you graduated, you left high school. Did you know immediately that you were going into this industry, a music indus industry? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I was in music related things in high school and middle school and elementary school. Uh, I played the trumpet. I was in every ensemble, first chair, drum major of the marching band, all the musicals, show choir. Um, I was around all of it, but <clears throat> my creative, uh, my field now is very creative in a compositional sense, um, not a performance sense in the trumpet. Um, I still like to play it, but not really professionally. Uh, yeah, I went to Indiana University um, and I entered as an acting major um, and it wasn't clicking that that's exactly what I wanted to do. I had done it since I think I was seven was my first musical. So it was just what I did. But um, I kind of had a moment freshman year of college. I wasn't that wasn't where my my real passion was. It was sort of just what I was good at, what I did. Um, I got into telecommunications because I had also DJed since middle school and I loved mixing music, you know, putting records together, you know, performing was obviously a big thing for me. So the telecommunications route led me into more of a technical understanding of the visual component um, of, you know, movies, TV shows, media. That was sort of short lived. And then I realized I was really wanting to create the music. Um, and Indiana's music school is phenomenal but they didn't have a music school um, that had a film scoring major. I was just enthralled with movie scores and Pirates of the Caribbean and you know anything Hans Zimmer, Harry Potter, John Williams. I wanted to do that. Uh, so I actually created my own major at Indiana, um, which was sort of my first real world, like no one's gonna check up on you. You're gonna create your own thing. And if you don't follow through, you don't go to class it's going to be for nothing. So that was sort of my first real moment of like, I can take ownership of this. Um, and that was <clears throat> when I was a freshman at Indiana. So from there, I got the, the, the four-year degree and um, I sort of knew like I, it was all based on what I wanted to do. And I didn't have sort of, you know, I had professors that were guiding me, but it was all me and my own goal setting um, and I was just attracted to, to the bigger movies and bigger movie scores. And that's sort of where I wanted to put, um, my effort into educationally. I think I've gotten off topic. Maybe did I answer that question? I, <laughs> I couldn't unmute. I'm sorry. I, oh, you're, I good. Muted. you're good. No, you're totally great. This is exciting. And it kind of leaves me, uh, to the next question and for I guess everyone else because Danny you took all of these courses in at Rolling Meadows in, in a lot of these pathways it said mm -hmm. you sound like you were in choir and you you were in the marching band and mm -hmm. you know you and it still led you on a, a path but it may have not been the exact path you wanted but you found it right. um let me ask some of our current students um and I'll start with you Jack what current classes have you I kind of briefly talked about like that speech theater world are there speech theater classes or any classes that you took within the pathway, you know, in the arts and um, what classes have you taken? So actually you did touch on the fact that you teach the college speech course, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I do take that class this year and I'm very excited about it. It focuses primarily on speech giving skills, even for people who aren't very, wouldn't consider themselves incredibly proficient in speech giving, public speaking. It works on the basics and builds up to refinements and it is really interesting of a class to be in. And it is similar to many of the skills you learn while you're on speech team itself. I'm actually the captain of the speech team and I've been sort of taking a bunch of little pieces from my class college speech into our weekly meetings for speech team because a lot of it is really important and a lot of it focuses on things that you can use to better yourself as a public speaker, as an extemporaneous speaker, as an informative speaker, as dramatizing certain parts of your voice. And it's very helpful for those kinds of things. 
I also have the privilege of taking an advanced acting class this year, which I adore. It goes into the history of drama and the context of theater and the evolution of the art as we know it, and also has a performance aspect in it. And it's really a beautiful class to take. It, it really has, it gives you a chance to broaden your horizons. Even if you're not a stage actor, even if you're not particularly interested in going to Broadway, it's really an amazing class to take because you just learn so much about yourself and about the curriculum. It helps to push you out of your comfort zone. And uh, finally, my other non-extracurricular related class that I take in the arts program is advanced two-dimensional art. Um, you work with a lot of mediums, charcoal. Um, I'm a little focused on charcoal right now because that's our current project and it gets everywhere, but it really is another way to push yourself out of your comfort zone. It's an outlet for creativity and it's such an amazing opportunity to be able to express myself in school. That's wonderful. And I, I think another really excellent point with the college level speech, besides teaching the every person how to articulate, which is an important skill, but it also provides our students college credit in high school. Yes. And so that they have the ability to earn you know, up to three hours of college credit um, through Eastern Illinois University, that College 101 course that many courses all require. So um, that is a great class. And, and, and thanks, Jack. Um, Denise, you too were, you said you were on the speech team. Uh, what, what classes are you taking or have you taken um, at Wheeling High School that have been in the career pathway? So uh, I am actually doing speech this year. I've never been on before. I've been too scared, um, but my choir director, who is also our speech team um, captain or coach, uh, has uh, finally convinced me to step out of my comfort zone in my senior year and join it. Um, I am also taking college speech this year. Uh, I think Jack uh, stated that, that that is a class. Uh, it's very helpful. Um, but I think that that is about the only class that I have taken in the pathway at my school um, for that specific team, which is. Of course, but you also are, were you in any choir classes? I am in choir. Um, I'm in our mosaic group, which uh, took place of our show choir group a couple years ago. Um, and I'm also in our gospel choir oh. at Wheeling High School, yes. Wonderful, thank you. Um, Emily, I know that you um, also dabble in a little charcoal or other mediums uh, what what classes have you taken at prospect high school that kind of have been in and you're in multiple pathways but i i know that you kind of have a, a plan of where you potentially may be going so i'm, I'm i would love to hear both like all of the classes that you've you've taken so far in the in the pathways so some of the big classes i've taken are within like the visual arts pathway so since freshman year, I've taken 2D art one, two, and then art portfolio. And right now I'm in AP art portfolio drawing. And these classes, the, they have amazing teachers who always push you out of your comfort zone. There's a millions of resources and different like types of mediums that you're allowed to use in these classes, especially for someone who's applying to colleges for design, um, they, they help you develop your portfolio, which is a big component of like your college application process. And it really strengthens you as an artist and pushes you out of your boundaries. It's very hands-on, both hands-on with your teacher and then also lots of independent work where you can develop as an artist on your own. I'm also involved with the marching band and then it goes into the symphonic band during the winter. These, it, um, my band director is amazing. He lets you go and perform in different, so many different ensembles and different just types of performances that let you really develop as a musician and really stand out. You're, we're, it's like solos are required, ensembles are required and just really about like how I was a freshman year. I'm totally different performer now as a senior. I'm also in orchestra, which is also a great ensemble to be part of. We work in clinics with different um, like instructors and the community is so great. and all these different opportunities let you grow so much as someone who plays an instrument. 
Thank you so much, Emily. And speaking of orchestra, Jess, um, you we know that you've been involved in many um, orchestra classes. Um, what what classes have you taken, and have there been any other classes that you know you you've taken at Hersey? Right. Um, so currently, I'm in symphonic orchestra. As a freshman, um, generally we're all put in uh, the concert orchestra. So I did that for one year, and then I've been in symphonic for three. Um, I'm also in chamber orchestra, which is our smaller group orchestra, whereas um, symphonic is about 60 students. Uh, chamber is only, um, I'd say, 16 to 20 students. Um, and the repertoire itself is a little bit harder. We have more performances. Um, we do a lot of outreach to the middle schools. So like um, on the 27th, we're going to be hosting River Trails at Hersey so that they can kind of get a, a better idea of what the um, orchestra program is like. Um, so we just, you know, inter interact a lot with the community as well as uh, Chamber often goes, you know, other places to um, learn from, you know, kind of collegiate level um, orchestras. Like we're planning on going to Northern Illinois University as a symphonic orchestra and hopefully University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign uh, just as a chamber orchestra so that we get more performing experience and we get that uh, really much needed feedback. Uh, you, you mentioned, I believe, that one of your um, orchestras that you're involved in is the District 214 Orchestra. Is that true? <clears throat> yeah, I am. Um, in the fall and the spring, it meets every Monday for two hours. Um, it is combined uh, all of the schools in District 214. So it is by audition. It is quite competitive. And obviously, the repertoire that we play is quite difficult. Our uh, concert is coming up November 17th, I want to say. Um, and usually at the end of our uh, spring session, we have a combined orchestra, uh, choir, and band performances, performance festival kind of thing. That's always super fun. Yeah, and the, every spring we have a combined honors um, choir, and then an honors band, and then an honors orchestra. And I believe maybe some of you have already been in either the honors choir or the honors band experience, where we bring in um, guest clinicians to work with our students. And we do that often in District 214. We try to bring in as many outside professionals to work with our students and have these little micro experiences that students can kind of learn from professionals besides just our teachers who are in the building. And thank you, Jess. Colleen, you um, mentioned that you do not only tech theater, but you've, you're designing a mural. Have you taken courses? What coursework have you taken um, at Buffalo Grove High School? So the main course that I've done for four years has been a band at BG. And I think that has provided me with a lot of really good opportunities. Like last year, my the BG Wind Ensemble made it to state. And that was a really cool experience for um, performing. And we also got to perform at Northwestern's Music Hall which was also, it was beautiful there. We got to take a day trip and, you know, and it's been, um, it was a bit of a shock last year when we heard our band director was leaving, but the new one that came this year, he's been really great so far. And I really enjoy being able to, you know, see how it is with a different director. And we we play, we've been doing a lot of sight reading, which is uh, really fun because he tries taking it at the actual tempo it is and everything just kind of like, <laughs> is just all over the place, but it's really fun, yeah. And I think that's really exciting for, you know, not only the staff member, but all the students to hear a new person on the podium, if you will, or a new teacher. Um, Danny, like, you have had multiple teachers, both at Pros not Prospect, at Rolling Meadows High School, at mm -hmm. Indiana University, but what are some of the things that you've learned throughout your years that maybe helped guided you into the field that you are in? I know you said that you did a lot of self kind of creating, but what are what are some lessons that you have, have learned or to have taken from whether it be Rolling Meadows High School or you've learned on your own through Indiana University? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, the best thing that still keeps me going today is 
just listen to yourself. That sounds really ambiguous and probably hard to decipher. And that's going to mean something different for everybody. But I can only, uh, you know, guess that whoever is here and whoever is listening to this has a kernel of interest, at least somewhere. Um, explore that. Because for me, it started as playing the trumpet. And I, I still love the trumpet, but that was sort of just the engine to teach me music to then get me to the next phase, which was creation. And I've been in LA post college for over 11 years doing this every single day. And I think it's okay if things evolve, you know, if you have an interest now, keep pushing that and keep listening to yourself. If that's still an interest that you have the next day. Um, chances are that if you're in the arts, it's going to evolve into something new and that <laughs> excitement and that idealism behind the creativity that you could get behind and you can create, I think is the engine that pushes all creatives because it's not always going to be a static. This is what I want to do today within the arts. It might be the same thing you want to do forever and that's completely fine, but keep finding that, keep pushing that. And for me, the biggest thing was listening to myself. Like I didn't want to be an actor. I didn't want to play the trumpet for the rest of my life. I wanted to create in a different form. And I just followed every day what I was just inspired by. Um, because we all listen too. We all are inspired by different things. We're here probably because we listen to an artist or we heard a musical or we, for me, like I loved drum corps and DCI in college. That's why I wanted to keep doing marching band. So I started figuring out like, what am I really excited about? What do I want to keep doing? Not what do I have to keep doing? You know, my parents never told me, we bought you a really expensive trumpet. Like you have to keep playing that. They could have, but they were supportive of me and whatever I wanted to do, which was, uh, I'm super grateful to them for that. Um, so I think the thing I learned along the way is just be honest with yourself and don't feel like you have to keep doing the same thing that you did yesterday. So within that creative process, Danny, I'll, I'll stay with you for one second. And I love the idea of listening to yourself. It, the, the, the puns and play with music is beautiful. And the dance, you know, we don't have a dancer here who's represented, but we have amazing dancers within our district, right? And, and there's st all different t styles of dance that we teach. Um, I'm so curious, like what you what you do every day. I mean, I, it lo I look behind you and it, the creative process and it could be different every single day. What is it that you what you do every day? Like if someone on this screen here is interested in 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 producing or creating music for film or video games or whatever your projects you currently are working on, like what is it what does it look like? So um music producer can mean a lot of different things. Um there's the music producer that will just create the music behind someone's song. Um, a, a good sort of forward thinking pop culture reference would be like Billie Eilish and her brother. She's the performer. He's the producer. He writes the songs and he produces them. He makes the music behind what she's what she's singing. That's one facet of it. That's that's a huge part of the industry. The other and he isn't looking for a ton of, you know, she's the star. Um, that's one music producer. The other side would be to take your sound and the things you create and actually make an artist project out of them you know you have social media you have spotify followers you have you know a tour hopefully you're out there performing and that is what my lane is um i mean if you google my name you'll find all of my music with all of the streams youtube spotify my social media accounts so my goal in my day-to-day -day is more revolving around building that community building the fan base um leveraging that into bigger opportunities and then you know like this summer i probably had 10 to 20 tour dates um and i'm playing a festival in florida next month so that's sort of day to day with me it's a full business it's not it's not just i make music every day sometimes you know i'm on zooms and sometimes i'm creating <laughs> social media strategies and branding myself into what i want to be as an artist um so that's kind of a i could talk about that for three hours oh my probably, gosh it, i mean yeah 
the um, the amazing things that you were saying and the action uh, directions we can go. But I I think it's important to note that all of arts is sometimes a business too. And I I think 100%. um in the in the pathway we we do encourage students to not only take just you know your your band your choir your dance class but there are other course core courses that you need in order to be a successful business person in the in the art world um you talk about music production we are we are offering new music production classes where we're learning how to use apps and programs in order to create our own music yeah. behind the scene so that's really really exciting and and thank you so much for sharing and we're we're going to come sure. back to you shortly but i appreciate Absolutely. that and your and your website is pretty awesome it's literally on fire it's awesome i i like it and thank i really you appreciate much. you yeah um i reached out to danny really in like 24 hours he responded right away so that was that was pretty cool so i uh, appreciate yeah, you doing always down yeah, that was really great thank um you. let's talk to the students no thank you so much um we talk a little bit about your coursework but there are really a ton of opportunities that district 214 offers that i guess are co-curricular experiences you know we have this blend of our marching band that's both curricular and co-curricular um but what uh, opportunities do you guys have that are outside of school hours? What what opportunities have you taken? Um, we haven't heard from you, Jack. You went first, and I'm going to have you go first again. But I know that you are participating in some co-curricular experiences at Rolling Meadows High School. What are some things that, that you have uh, done and, and students can participate in and take advantage of or try? And then if they don't like it, like you know, Danny said, I don't want to be an actor anymore. I'm going to go do something else. In high school, you have that opportunity to try all of these different experiences. What are some things that you're trying, you did, or you're doing? I could talk about this for hours. I adore the opportunity to bring people into the arts in ways that I even I wasn't able to for a while. Current freshmen and underclassmen sometimes consider me as someone who is very intrinsically involved in the arts, but that's only because I have time for that now, curricularly. I budgeted my time amongst my coursework throughout my four years in high school to touch on several different career pathways that I was interested in. So I didn't really have time to take art classes that I wanted to take until this year. Before now, my only opportunity to be involved in the arts would be co-curricular. And I am so unbelievably grateful that we have such incredible co-curricular activities available because I have been able to have been involved in speech team enough that now I'm the captain and theater enough that I've been a four year member of theater. And um, there's art club, there is sometimes the newspaper counts as the arts and there's just a lot that there is able to be involved in and theater, theater and speech and art club, all of it is incredibly inclusive of people who are just not involved in this curricularly, but have time after school or on the weekends. And it just envelops everybody who has a moment of their time that they feel they would they would personally prefer to dedicate to creating something, into being something, into making something more beautiful. And that's what I was really grateful to have the opportunity to do as an underclassman before I could fully commit myself to, to take a class or to take an art class or a theater class or or before I was old enough to take college speech, I could come to a Tuesday meeting after school. You know, it was, there's a lot that's available to everybody. <laughs> no, I think that's really a great point that you brought up. Thank you, Jack. You do not have to take a class to always participate in some of the co-curricular experiences. Um, you know, there's some schools that offer some extracurricular choir experiences that aren't connected. Um, theater, like you said, you do not have to take an acting class to still do the after school um, activity. And so thank you for bringing that up. Um, there are still these co-curricular experiences that can help students get involved or try different uh, avenues in their vehicle. Um, Denise, what are what are some opportunities? I think we talked a little bit about speech team that your choral director um, highly encouraged you, I think are the, the words I heard, not nothing else um but we did no no what other and experiences have you have you had outside of the classroom so i know marching band is technically a curriculum but um i used to play tuba in middle school 
um, when I went into high school, I wanted to do Color Guard, which is a branch of our marching band. Um, I was in Color Guard for three years. Um, we're basically the people that hold pretty flags on the field uh, and dance and, you know, do little little tricks with them. Um, I was a captain for Color Guard. Uh, my senior year, which is this year, I became a drum major, um, which was really interesting. Um, um, so I guess that is something. Um, I already talk, talk, spoke about, sorry, spoke about the choirs. Um, I've also been in three of our four musicals at school. Um, my first year, I was actually in tech crew, uh, just because it worked out with my schedule more than actually being in the show. Um, I did the sound for that one uh, with one of my uh, really lovely friends who already graduated. Um, and then last year, uh, we did Cry Baby, which actually made it to state, um, but very unfortunately got canceled. Um, state got canceled last year, or I guess this year, the beginning of this year, because of mm -hmm. COVID. And uh, I'm a part of our show this year, which is working the musical. Um, I've been student director two years, and uh, we have a bunch of awesome plays at our school, which I'm hoping I'll be able to audition for this year. And I've participated in our variety shows at school. And that, yeah, I think that, that that about wraps it up. That's great, Denise. Thank you for bringing up, you know, student directing and color guard. The, we're the people who hold the pretty flags. I love that line. That was good. It's going to go on the, the sleeve. One sleeve says, you know, listen to yourself and then hold pretty flags. Um, so that's really wonderful, Denise. Thank you for that. We have our student directing. I love that you brought that up. Our tech crew. I think it's really cool that a student could be on tech crew one year and then on stage the next. Maybe it just doesn't work with your schedule. Colleen, did you say that you also did tech crew um, at Buffalo Grove? Yes, I did. I um, I would like, I'd say I'm a very good example of it's never too late to get into the arts pathways. If at especially at BG, I um I started Tech Crew last year, and I got to do it for the musical Grease, which was very fun. I got to design a bunch of different backgrounds and logos for. I don't know if if, if anyone has seen Grease, but for like Wax Radio, part of it's part of the show. I got to paint and kind of help design Grease Lightning which was really cool. And it was just like a, it was just a really fun experience. The tech crew, I love it because you really, when you're on the stage, you don't really have to commit to a specific, uh, specific medium. You don't have to just be paint. You don't have to just be woodworking. It's really interchangeable with what you can do. And it's really nice to try a lot of new things. And um, the, the, whole, the whole reason I got involved in the arts at BG was because so over the pandemic, uh, before the pandemic, I, I was interested in art, but I really didn't do a lot of it. But then during the pandemic, I, um, develop, I, with, I, I was a sport person, but because all of those got canceled during the uh, year on, the ending freshman year for me I developed my art skills and then junior year my friend dragged me to art club which I hadn't been able to previously do because I because I was in diving for my fall season so and I still am right now um, and it was I, I just fell in love with being able to go around the art room and you can really just try anything during art club. It's an hour of time every Tuesday after school where you can do whatever you want and the art teacher's there to help guide you and just really just really develop your skills. Even if it's just for an hour each week, it's really helpful, especially if you aren't able to take an art class that year. Yep, that's and wonderful. Yeah, and there and BG has a lot of art opportunities, even outside the art pathway. Like uh, for an example, or for example, uh, I'm in NHS, and through NHS is actually how I came to be doing a mural at the school. It's kind of a 
funny story. I um I signed up for uh, service hours for painting for or for making posters for school dance, and um one of the one of the teachers at our school was saying how she wanted to do a Statue of Liberty, but didn't uh, couldn't find a poster or something. So I just said, oh, I can paint it. And uh, <laughs> she she was like, um, are you sure about that? And so it was a, uh, so then she um, said, she was she said it was okay. And so for two days straight after school, I was painting nonstop to finish this Statue of Liberty. It was as tall as me and uh, my, and a bunch of teachers overheard I was painting it and started visiting me. I even got a free sweatshirt from our cheer coach, which was fun. And then my principal ended up walking in. And after we talked, uh, he at, he asked me if I could do a mural for our school's language department. And so it was it was like such a random chance opportunity, but it, it goes to show you never know what's going to happen and you can find opportunities really anywhere. I think that's I think that's it. And you when they when you come to District 214, you know, we have plenty of opportunities and you just kind of have to try and, and you can take him. And I love that. Oh, I can do that energy, you know, like, oh, I can, oh, you want me to paint that? Sure. And then who knows, you may get free swag here in district 214. That's what I'm hearing. I love it. it we do it for the swag. Um, we only have a few minutes left and I really want to hear about all of like what you guys are going into. I have so many more questions and I thank the panel and Danny for coming and sharing just a, um, a little bit of information about your lives. And I know your stories are so much deeper than this. Um, so thank you guys for your time. I want people to know also that District 214, that with this whole idea of, oh, I want that, or I can do that. We, we offer internship experiences, micro or macro experiences. So if, if you go to your um, student success coach and say, hey, I'm really interested in becoming a tech director, like, or I want to learn, learn about stage crew, you know, we can connect you with a local theater like Metropolis and, and get you an opportunity to work through them. Um, maybe it's even, I want to, I want to do an art project and we can do murals in our community as well. So Colleen, you should probably check that out if you're, you're done with this mural you know, get another opportunity here. You know, we want to provide our students with experiences now so they know that this is the path that they may want to go on. But as we heard from Danny, it's okay to change at any point, right? You just got to listen to your song, listen to your heart, if you will. And so I am listening to my heart and I know that I've been talking for a long time and it's about that time that we are going to call it an end and thank everyone. So I do want to thank again, um, Jack and Denise and Jess and Emily and Colleen and Danny for your time for coming out. Um, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to reach out to me at jeremy.morton at d214.org. So my name is right there and you add the little D as in district 214.org. I'd be more than happy to answer those questions or find someone who has the answers. But um, what we what we like, I would love to end with um, just that uh, the idea of you can do it in District 214. We can try to help you find that experience. And for those of our upperclassmen on here, it's like you said, it's not too late. So if you want to find an opportunity, I appreciate it. Uh, if you could find it in between the 1 million orchestras you are in. Hey, break a leg, Jess, on your uh, show, Big Fish. What is it? November 3rd through 5th. And I believe we've got working coming up like the two weeks later. We've got a lot of people involved in shows and Emily just finished her marching band season, Colleen finished her marching band season, and Jack, you just are in the middle of your show. So I know that you guys are all exhausted. So thank you so much for taking an evening. And Danny, you're hungry because it's dinner time in LA soon. So keep, good luck on your projects. And uh, if you're interested in learning more about Danny's concerts and see if there are any lo local concerts, I'm sure he'd love for you to check out him on social media and Instagram. And he's got a bunch of, I think, YouTube pages and things like that um so just look up danny olson and you will you will find a ton of information it is 7 45 and on youtube i think they say i'm out boom thanks for coming everyone <laughs> uh we appreciate you have a good night everyone thank you thanks a lot guys bye